Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TransMusicMastery.com. In this video, I will show you how Adam Sabo created a pluck sound like the one heard in Just For You original mix by Daniel Condi. And the sound that Adam created sounds like this. Okay, and let me just walk through the MIDI clip quickly. This is probably something better for you to just download and inspect, but I did want to just point out a couple things. The rhythmic pattern, basically it's a sequence of three sixteenth notes. So if you look at these first three, we've got the first sixteenth, the fourth sixteenth, and the seventh sixteenth, and then in the third beat, we've got the third sixteenth, and in the fourth beat, we've got the second and the fourth sixteenth, okay? And you'll notice that it's shifted a little bit between this one and this one. There are three sixteenth note gap here, and that gives it a different rhythmic feel. But again, let me go ahead and just play through it with the MIDI clip being shown. I'll expand it a little bit. And the notes are based around D sharp, G sharp, A sharp, there's an F here, a C here, C sharp, D sharp, and then back to D sharp, G sharp, C, and then at the end here there's a G, G sharp, and C. So let's go ahead and play that. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through the sound map. And this patch is built on two oscillators. Oscillator 1 is a quad saw. Oscillator 2 is a dual stacked saw. What's interesting about this patch is that the modulation of the pitch on oscillator 1 and 2 is done with both an envelope and an LFO. And this causes a very distinct pitch sound to be heard right at the beginning of each pluck note. And so as I go through the patch, you're going to see what I mean by that. Now, that flows into a filter configured with LP Vintage, and that cutoff frequency is being modulated by envelope 3. And that envelope has a zero attack, medium decay, sustain at zero, and a medium release. Then it flows into an amplifier with the volume being modulated by envelope 1 with zero attack, medium decay, sustain at 29.5% and a medium release. And then that flows into the effects and to the main output. Adam Sabo says this sound needs to serve as a pluck as well as a lead. So we need to have some saws detuned but have short decay for the filter envelope to make it sound like a pluck. Once the filter is open, we can hear the detuned saws. To have the nice trancy feel, we also need to make it sound more snappy, and we can achieve this by modulating the pitch slightly with an envelope with very short decay time. Okay, let's go through the effects. We have an EQ first with a minus 1.5 dB near 450 hertz, and then a plus 5.5 dB boost near 1 kilohertz, and a plus 7 dB boost near 2.7 kilohertz. That flows into a compressor with slow attack and fast release, and this helps accentuate the initial attack of the sound. And then that flows into, this is a stereo delay with left at one eighth note and right at one quarter note, and then 50% dry wet mix. And then that flows into a reverb with approximately a four second reverb tail and low dampening for bright reverb sound, and then to the main output. Okay, let's build this patch. Okay, so I'm starting from the initialize patch, and let me just play a portion of the sequence so we hear how that sounds. Okay, and the first thing that we want to do is set up oscillator 1 and set the stacking mode to quad, and we're going to detune these saw waves from one another, and we want to set the detune amount to 8.03. Okay. 
And to increment it by 0 0.01 each time, I held the shift key down and then moved the detune. And next we want to set the width to 100. That will separate them in the stereo field. Okay, and I'll come back to the modulation of the pitch in a moment. Let me set up oscillator 2. Set the stacking mode to dual. Set the detune amount to 10. And set the mixer width to 100. Okay, and now let's go ahead and set up envelope 1. We're going to set the decay time to 30.5. The sustain to 29.5. And once we got near 29.5, we started to hear that more plucky character. And then set the release to 32.5. And velocity set that to zero. Okay, so that sets up the basic oscillators and the amplitude envelope. Okay, so next what I want to do is go ahead and set up the modulation of the pitch on the oscillators. And to do that, we have to use a component called the modulation mixer. And that allows us to modulate a parameter based on more than one modulation source. In fact, up to three modulation sources plus this constant parameter. So I'm going to set the modulation for the tune on each oscillator to modulation mix one. And they're both going to have the same amount. They're both going to have four. So we'll set that now. And right now there's no change because I have not set a modulation source on the modulation mixer. All right. The first one I'm going to add is the LFO. So let me do that with modulation two. So now if I play the sequence. Okay. In fact, let me just in case there's some confusion on this, the way this is working. I set the modulation mix amount on both oscillators to zero. So now it sounds like, okay, what we started with. Now I'm going to increase the modulation mix amount, which will allow some of modulation from this mod mixer, which right now is only using the LFO plus this constant. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set constant to zero. In fact, let me redo that and play it as I change it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and set LFO1. We want to bring the amplitude down considerably. In fact, it's going to be close to zero. So I'm just going to bring it down all the way to zero. And now I'm going to slowly bring it up to 3.67. And now we want to increase the rate. the rate set to 161.91. Okay, so you can hear that modulation occurring on the tune. 
Now what we want to do is add an envelope to that modulation or to the LFO. And to do that, we can select mod 1 here and set it to ENV2. Now when we play it, it sounds like this. Okay, so now let me set up ENV2. And we want to set the decay time to 9.39 and the sustain to 0. So I'm going to set sustain to 0 first. And then now bring decay down to 9.39. And release, set that to 31.5. And the velocity, set that to 0. Okay, that takes care of setting up the modulation on the oscillator pitch. Now, to demonstrate this, these modulations independently of one another. Let me clear the LFO modulation and here we will, in fact I'm going to clear envelope 2 as well. We'll play it and then I'll set the modulation to ENV2 about halfway through and you'll hear what effect just the envelope has on the pitch. It's a very subtle modulation of the detune of the tuning there. Now if I add LFO, okay, and now I'm gonna just play LFO by itself, so I'll clear E and V2. So very subtle modulation occurring here when we have both combined, but it is noticeable. So just experiment with that and turning one off and back on and, until you can hear it, hear the difference. All right, so next what we want to do is go ahead and set up the filter. So we're going to add VCF1 and set the type to LP Vintage and then bring cutoff down to 7. And then we will add modulation of the cutoff, selecting E and V3 as the modulation source. And then bring that up to 106. Increase resonance to 3.5. Key follow to 6.5. and drive to 7.5. Okay, now let's set up envelope 3. So here we're trying to use envelope 3 in effect to help give that plucky character to the sound by modulating the cutoff frequency. So I'm going to set the attack to 0, it already is, set to K to 42. Set sustain to zero. So based on the attack decay and sustain settings, this cutoff frequency will start at its maximum value and then quickly decay over this time to this cutoff frequency here. Now set release to 33.5. and velocity to zero. That's the basic setup for the oscillators, filter, and modulators. 
Next, we want to go to the effects. But before we do that, there is one last change I need to make here on the oscillator one. We want to set its mode to crisp. So let's listen if that has any effect. Not much effect right now with the filter where it is, but if we open that filter, get a little bit higher harmonics there. They come in, you can see it when I turn this to crisp. And then I did hear a little bit of an increase in the brightness of the overall patch. So I'm going to set that to crisp. Oscillator 2, we leave that at soft. And that's it. That's the way Adam has this set up. So next, let's go ahead and set up the EQ. Okay, we're going to leave filter 1 where it is. We're not going to be using that, the low shell filter. We want to apply a, a minus 1.5... Actually, I'll apply that cut at the very end. So filter 3, we want to apply a 5.5 dB boost, just under 3 kilohertz. And we want to set the resonance to 0. And then filter 4, we're going to, in fact, let me bring cutoff back down to 7. Filter 4, we're going to apply a 7.0 dB boost just below 3 kilohertz. And increase resonance to 43. And then for filter 2, we're going to apply a minus 1.5 dB cut just below 550. And increase resonance to 69. And now, let me just demo it with and without the EQ. So this filters three and four, giving it much more presence. And then there's a little notch here just below 500, just to help clarify it some more, make it a little clearer, give it more definition. Next, uh, let's go ahead and add a compressor. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is bring the threshold down to minus 40.5. Now we will increase attack to 63.5. And that allows more of the initial attack to come through before it gets compressed. And then set release to 25. Next, set the compression mix to 25.5. And we're going to increase the input slightly to 0.4 dB. And the output to 10 dB. And 
And, you know, regarding that slight input boost, I'm not sure I can hear much of a difference between the two. Let me check that. Okay, let's go ahead and add a delay. And for this, we're going to set the ratio to 50. Go ahead and do that. Before I do that, let's set the mix to 50. Set the cross back to zero. And set feedback to 51. Now we're going to add reverb. For this, we want to set dry all the way to 100 and wet to 54. Set pre-delay to 36. And that pre-delay helps that initial pluck to come through before the reverb kicks in. And then set the range to 79.5 and the feedback to 61. Going to increase the damp slightly to 7.5 and the speed to 71 and the modulation to 26. And the diffuser settings, we're going to leave those at their default values. That's it for this patch. But what I wanted to do was just demonstrate with and without each of these effects. So let's just build this back up again. So here's the basic patch before any effects are applied. And then I'll add EQ. Next, compression. Next, delay. And finally, reverb. Okay, and now that is the patch. Now, uh, one thing we can do is go ahead and play it with the pad that we created earlier. So I've got that set up here. Let me go back to track two, enable that, and now I'm gonna play both together. So very nice. And that's it for this patch. I'll see you in the next video.